Greetings and welcome to the Job Search Strategies for Direct Entry Nursing Students presentation brought to you by the Marquette University Career Services Center. My name is Sharonda Oliphant. I'm a career counselor in the Career Services Center on Marquette's campus and will happily be serving as your presenter today. For today's presentation, I'll be spending a little bit of time talking about career services, who we are, where we're located, how we help students, and then we'll move into job search strategies, specifically for nursing students. We'll do a little bit of a recap, and then we'll talk more about the Q&A session coming up. So for those of you who've not had an opportunity to visit our office, the Career Services Center is located right in the center of campus. We're on 13th and Wisconsin Avenue, two doors to the right of Varsity Theater. The main component of the Career Services Center mission that I like to share with students is that we partner with students. We are looking to meet you wherever you are at within your career journey and help you get to wherever it is that you so desire to be. Or maybe you're the student who doesn't specifically know where you wanna be, we can assist you with that as well. We are not the office to simply do the work for you, but we wanna partner with you, give you some tools, give you some methods for how to do things well, and then you can utilize those tools for the rest of your life. Don't worry, after you graduate, you do still have access to the Marquette Career Services Center. As a Marquette University alumni, that is one of your benefits. And believe me, we definitely meet with alumni through the main service that we offer through the Career Services Center to students and alumni are individual appointments. These appointments can be up to 50 minutes long and are really tailored to the student or alumni that we are meeting with. So again, wherever you are at on your career journey, we wanna meet you there and help you get to where you're looking to be. So if you are the person who really just needs to nail down a really great resume and cover letter, of course we can assist with that, but we can also help with job search, internship search, externship search, co-ops, finding part-time career related positions. If you're the person who really wants to just spruce up your interviewing skills, we can help with that as well. When it comes to getting job offers, if you're the person that has multiple offers, first of all, kudos. And then secondly, we can help you walk through those offers to figure out which one might be best for you. If you need help with salary negotiation, looking over benefits, things of that nature, we can help out with that as well. Another service that we have are our drop-in hours. These are from noon until 2 p.m. every single day. It's a quick 10 to 15 minutes with a career intern or a career advisor where you can go over your professional documents, do a brief practice interview, get some additional assistance with Handshake, which I'll be explaining a little bit more later, or our office also offers a LinkedIn photo booth. You can take a professional headshot and we just send it straight to your email for you to utilize as you wish. Once a month this semester, we have our evening drop-in hours from 4 until 6 p.m. That time may be changing next semester, so keep your eye open for emails from Handshake um, with us kind of explaining the dates and times for those next semester. We totally understand people have class during the day, they have work, they have clinicals. So these evening drop-in hours have seemingly been helping with that issue. Now that you know a little bit more about our office, where we're located, what our mission is, how we work with students, we're gonna go ahead and move into job search strategies. So no matter what type of position a person is looking for, be it part-time career related, be it an externship or a full-time position, there's really three ways a person can go about looking for those positions. The first is responding to postings. The second 
is targeting organizations specifically. And the third method is through networking. We are going to spend a little bit of time discussing each one of these methods and how you can best utilize the method for finding your next ideal position. So the first element of job search strategies that I had mentioned was responding to job postings. This can be done by way of general job boards such as Indeed or Simply Hired. It can also be done by way of more specific job boards. So there's a few that we list on our website specific to nursing, I'm going to pop onto the internet and show you some of those resources more specifically. So this is the Career Services Center website. Very easy to use, very user friendly. We updated it about a year and a half ago and are very excited for what it has become. Within our resources area here, if we were to click on college major specific resources, it's going to take us to a listing of all of the colleges on Marquette's campus. So when we click on College of Nursing, very specific to you guys, we have a listing of resources here that we deem to be, so to speak, cream of the crop or some of the best resources, most reliable resources out there. So the first resource that I would like to share with you all is the National Nursing Positions website. This website is better known as Liquid Compass. You may have heard of it from some of your classmates or professors in the nursing area. This website is really, really great. Um, the one that we have is custom to Marquette University. As you can see the logo right up top here and a lot of the positions that are listed or at least the popular positions are within the Milwaukee area. The reason I really, really like this website is because you can do a search. You can simply look through the popular searches, but then you can also see featured employers and look for positions from those featured employers through this resource. So if we were to type in nursing here, and then we'll leave Milwaukee, Wisconsin, just as demonstration, it will take us to the results page over on the left hand side you have your filters so if you want to filter by years of experience if you want to filter by professional category actual role specialty you can do all of that right over here and there's quite a few filters as well they even have filters for shifts so if you're the person who enjoys being a night owl and you want that super late shift you can select that here length of shift, etc. Really great filters there. The map right in the middle just gives you an idea of where those positions are. So 427 of them are right in the Milwaukee area. And then it kind of branches out. Fort Atkinson has 18, West Bend 25. And of course, with this map, you can make it larger or smaller depending on what you're looking for. So right over here in the results area, we see over 950 different positions. That is quite a few positions. And what's really great, again, some of them are part-time, some of them are practitioner positions, some are full-time. So this really gives you, as I said before, a very, very large amount of specific to the nursing area type of positions that you might be interested in applying to. So any of these positions, if you're simply to click on it, it's going to give you the location, when it was posted, and then it'll give you a little bit of a description, the employer, all of that information is there. Through the Liquid Compass website, you can click apply. What it will do is it will ask you to enter in your email and then additional information. If you wanted to do that, you definitely can, completely up to you. But you could also go to this company's website, look for the position through their website and apply that way. So multiple ways you can get at the actual application. 
Another thing I really like about Liquid Compass is right over here they have create a job alert. So if you were to go through and enter in all of the filters that apply to the type of position that you're looking for and then you click create job alert, when a position that matches your filters comes into the system, you will automatically get an email. What that does is it saves you time, effort, and energy in going out to these various websites and looking for positions. It kind of helps you be more efficient and more effective with your job search. So now we're going to hop back to that listing of nursing resources on the Career Services Center's webpage. Right down here, we have hospital listings by state. This resource I really, really enjoy because if we were to click on Wisconsin here, it's going to give us a fairly extensive listing of the different hospitals that are in Wisconsin. Some of these are further up north. Some of these are closer to the Illinois border. Some of these maybe we've heard of, and then some of them maybe we've not. So to have a listing of all of the hospitals out there really just opens us up to additional opportunities for positions that maybe we had not thought of or known about. And if you are the person who is looking to potentially leave Wisconsin post-graduation, completely fine. Simply click on the state that you're interested in working in. And again, you have a very extensive listing of the hospitals that are in that state. So super useful resource to utilize. So right underneath that listing of helpful websites, we have a listing of professional associations. I'm sure many of you have probably heard of American Nurses Association, but maybe not everyone knows that through these professional association websites, you can actually find some extremely helpful career tips as well as positions that are available. So on ANA specifically, underneath practice and policy, they have a career center. So within their virtual career center, once you've clicked on that link, you can add in a keyword or a job title as well as location and do a job search that way. If you were simply to scroll down, they have featured nursing jobs listed right there. And it doesn't say that you have to be a full-time member in order to utilize this resource. So something that you can utilize for free this here is saying, hey, do you want us to send you alerts about positions? So very similar to what we saw in Liquid Compass. But if we click out of that, their website is extremely user friendly. So over on the left hand side, it will list those positions. And then over on the right side, it has those job descriptions listed, as well as other positions that you may be interested in. And if you look at this number here, that's over 10,000 positions. Do keep in mind that this website is not specific to Wisconsin. So you will see positions for, let's see, New York, Oklahoma, um, kind of all over. Hey, one for Wisconsin, look at that. But kind of all over the place, which is why that number is so high there. But just like you could do with this ANA website, you can also do that with some other professional association websites. So on our website, we have Wisconsin Nurses Association, as well as a few others that you could utilize to explore positions. So underneath our professional associations, if we were to skip over student organizations, we have a listing of a few LinkedIn groups that we recommend. If we were to click this here, it's going to take us over to LinkedIn, straight to this group's page. Do know that on LinkedIn, some groups you have to request to join, some are open to the public. It looks like this group is one that you have to request to join, 
But with being a nurse, I would see no reason not to want to join this group. What's really great about being a part of groups is oftentimes there are different conversations that are taking place that are relevant to things going on within the industry. And then you can oftentimes to interact with people who may be willing to give you a heads up if a position becomes available at their organization and then some folks may just post directly to the group a position that's available at their organization so look for those groups on linkedin if you have a linkedin account already pop back to our resources page and join the groups that we have recommended We've now covered some external websites that can be utilized for job search, but now I'd like to show you guys Handshake, which is an internal career platform utilized specifically for Marquette students and alumni. So Handshake can be easily accessed through the Career Services Center homepage. If you simply scroll down here, student login is the first login link and because you are a marquette student you automatically have a handshake account so once you click this link here all you'll need to do because you're taken to the specially formatted marquette login page is enter in your user information just as you would for checkmark or emark and once you've entered in that information it should let you into the system. Do know if you've not utilized Handshake before, it may take you through a little bit of a setup process. That is just to customize your profile. You do have the option to skip that for now if you wanted to. But here's the key to Handshake. When we enter information into our profile, it allows the system to do a better job of utilizing an algorithm to determine what should go on our home page or our dashboard so as you can see i've kind of made up some information here and then it'll actually show me how complete my profile is so i could add in organizations that i'm a part of i could add my resume my cover letter if i chose to do that and then i can enter in interest etc so quite a bit of customization possible with your profile let me show you the dashboard so on that dashboard again the more you fill out within your profile the better the results here will be but it'll show on-campus jobs as it relates to your major upcoming events it shows those in general so that won't be as closely tied to what you enter into your profile and then trending questions is one of the newer assets of handshake really great resource to utilize so folks can ask questions here and then other handshake user users can actually answer those questions so interviewing questions and things of that nature then we pop down here and it has different things, again, popular to folks in the education field listed. So the dashboard is just, you know, full of really good stuff the more you enter into your profile. But when it comes to looking for positions within Handshake, right up here, you click on jobs. And then we could type in nursing as a title type in a location if you so desire but we have a few filters that you can utilize and then it's showing a little over 330 positions available so positions are listed on the left here as you can see and then job descriptions are listed on the right so 
Handshake has it where they will show you how well you match a position based on information within your profile. Do not allow that to deter you from applying to a position if it's something that you're really interested in. But this will show you when applications are closing. It does a really nice job of saying, hey, you're going to be applying externally for this position. There are some employers that utilize Handshake to have applicants apply internally to the system. So it's nice to know, am I going to be, you know, applying within Handshake or will I be applying externally? And you can very easily see that there. Typical job description is listed out here. So really great to kind of see that um, listed right within Handshake. Again, a system that is for market students and alumni specifically. If you were interested in seeing events that were coming up, simply click on events. You can find career fairs. For those who are interested in coming in for an appointment, you can request appointments. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but then it has all of the different events that are taking place on campus as well as off campus listed here. So Handshake is fairly user friendly and can be extremely helpful in looking for your next position. So there may be some of you who would rather not do such a widespread search. You'd rather be more specific with your search. When we're thinking about that type of job search, what you're really doing is you're targeting organizations. So when we're targeting organizations, our values and our desires really come into play. So a few things that you might consider would be the size of an institution. Are you looking to work for a very large hospital that has a lot of reach, maybe nationally, um, maybe sometimes even internationally, or are you looking to work for a smaller hospital that has like a very homey, close-knit type of feel to it? Religious affiliations and beliefs can also be extremely important to folks when looking for institutions to work for or even opportunities for growth. Would you want to advance to, you know, a different position and would that organization have that opportunity available for you when you were ready to do so? I know with you all doing clinicals, some folks having externships, others being CNAs, previous interactions with hospitals can also play a very big part. If you had an awesome experience at Children's Wisconsin, then you may want to work for Children's Wisconsin because of that interaction. Specializations, if you were looking to work in a particular department, not every hospital will have every specialization department available. So figuring out which hospitals have what you're looking for can definitely help you narrow down your list. And then of course, location. Do you want to be Metro Milwaukee? Would you like to be further in a suburb? Or maybe you're looking to travel to a different state. All of those things are going to be drastically important in narrowing down your list. Once you have started figuring out which institutions you might be interested in, I highly recommend creating a spreadsheet to keep the information organized as you begin your job search. We've discussed responding to postings. We've discussed targeting organizations. Now we're going to move into networking. Networking is not listed last here because it is of least importance. It is definitely important when it comes to looking for a position. Networking often has a negative connotation to it, but honestly, it's the cultivation of productive relationships. Simply put, the exchange of information among individuals. If you are networking with a person, it should be of quality. 
right? It doesn't matter how many people we've networked with if none of our connections are of quality. When you're talking to a person, the main thing you want to be sure of is that you all have something in common to discuss and that you can exchange information and be of benefit to one another. So why is networking so important? Well, believe it or not, even with the economy being where it is today, 80 to 85% of jobs are never advertised. This means when a position becomes open or is due to become open, a company already has another person in mind to place within that position. Sometimes this is called internal hiring, or it may be hiring by way of a reference. So someone recommends a friend or a peer professional, and that person then gets that position. Another reason that networking is so important is because who you know can oftentimes be more important than what you know. You could have a stellar resume. You could have amazing experiences. And if you are applying to a position at an organization, and let's say 150 other applicants are also applying to that position, your resume really has to stand out and make it to the top of the pile for you to then be considered for an interview. But let's say you knew someone at that organization, had interacted with them before, and you keep them as a resource within your network, this person goes and tells the hiring manager that they know you, and out of 150 applicants, your application gets more of a eye than others and could potentially, in a quicker manner, make it to the top of the pile. The third reason networking is so important is because your network can honestly help you advance in your career even when you have a job and may not be looking to advance. So let's say you're working in a position and one of your peer professionals says, hey, I know about this opportunity that's happening. I'd love to pass your name along. It's not something that you were seeking out, but it's something that they had recommended for you or recommended you for. So again, your network can work for you if you have good people within it. I've interacted with students and alumni before who get to the point of being ready to network and then they think, okay, well, who are my connections? How do I start this process of networking and how do I do it well? So there are a few folks who are usually in your network just by way of you being who you are. These are your warm contacts, we like to call them. These are folks that you know just because they're your parents, your relatives, your classmates. Maybe they go to church with you. Maybe you worked with them previously or you currently work with them. Those folks count as people within your network. The reason that they count is as long as they know what your goals or what your plans are, they can talk about you, those goals, and those plans with other people. You'd be surprised how many networking opportunities arise by sitting on a plane next to another person. My cousin travels as HR representative for her company all over the country. She's connected me to quite a few folks who work in higher education that she has met on planes. So again, never doubt that those who are closest to you, as long as they know what you're capable of and what you're looking for, can then work their network on your behalf. So outside of connecting with those who are in your warm contacts, there are also methods that you can utilize for connecting to folks that you may not know directly. One of the greatest ways to make connections with folks in your industry is LinkedIn. I cannot speak highly enough of LinkedIn 
and its capabilities. I'd like to show you a couple of different ways that you can utilize LinkedIn to find folks to network with. So previously I showed you all how to access some of the nursing groups that our office recommends. But on LinkedIn, there's quite a few other ways that you can find folks to network with. One of those ways is to connect with our office. If you were to type in Marquette University Career Services Center, click that link there. This takes you to our Marquette University Career Services Center page on LinkedIn. The reason connecting with us can be so helpful is that we have 500 plus connections. So with the way LinkedIn works, if you know a person directly, you're considered to be a first connection. If you know a person that has a mutual connection with someone you don't know, that's considered to be a second degree connection and so on and so forth. Kind of like the diagram up here, it's kind of a spider web type of effect. So by connecting to us, you're at least becoming a second degree connection with 500 plus other folks on LinkedIn. So definitely do that. Another thing that you can do is look up Marquette University's school page. So once we get to the page here, there's about us, there's jobs, and then the section that I highly, highly recommend is the alumni section. By clicking on that link there, it's going to show us over 87,000 Marquette University alumni. That is a lot of folks to be connected to. And the really great thing is that they went to Marquette and guess what? You do too. So when you're making connections with these folks, the first thing that you want to say is, I see you went to Marquette. I'm a student at Marquette. What that does is it opens them up to have more of a discussion with you. Right up top, you can type in keywords. If you wanted to type in nursing, you could do that. If you wanted to type in Children's Wisconsin, you could do that as well. And what that will do is filter down the results for you. Right up top, we have some built-in filters geographically where folks live, and we'll kind of expand this here, where they're working, so name of organization, what they do, what they studied, what they have listed as their skills, and then how you are connected to those folks. So any of these filters, if you wanted to utilize them, you definitely could. Let's say you wanted to talk to folks in greater Chicago area. We click that link, and as you can see, the number here has changed, and we scroll down, and we can see those names there. But let's take it a step further and let's add a keyword to our search. So we'll go with nursing, of course. And then this narrows down folks with that keyword of nursing in their profile. And our number has decreased to 935. I don't know about you, but 935 potential people to talk to is still an amazingly large number. So once we scroll down here, we can see what those people are doing. So this person, the CNA, looks like she may have just completed school or started school recently. Uh, let's see. We have some other folks who are currently students, some master level students. We have someone who is a director of nursing. So it looks like she's been in the industry for quite some time. A registered nurse here so again kind of filter through see if anyone is of interest in talking to the easiest way to connect with a person is simply by pressing the connect button what that does is it sends them a message through LinkedIn saying hey this person would like to connect with you if you wanted to take it a step further what you could do is by looking at where the person works, 
look up their email address and send them an email directly to their work account. Again, starting out by saying, hello, my name is dot dot dot, insert your name, of course. I attend Marquette University. I see that you went here as well. I find what you do to be quite interesting or I'm interested in learning more. I'd love to connect with you for 30 minutes, 45 minutes to hear more about your journey, right? So with that networking method, what you're really doing is you're focusing on gathering information. You're not saying, hello, Samantha, I'm looking for a position, right? Samantha may not be able to help you out with that. So that's not the method that we want to utilize. But what we do want to say is, hi, Samantha, I'm interested in this. I would love to learn more. Usually folks are very much so open to sharing information about what they do, especially if they love or greatly enjoy their position. There's a few things you want to make sure you do after you've started making these really good connections. The first thing is to send a quick thank you. This can be easily done via email or in written form. A quick thank you definitely goes a long way and making sure that it's personalized to include maybe a snippet from you all's conversation just gives the thank you more of a positive feel. I do not recommend handing out pre-written thank yous. Oftentimes that can show that there was no reflection or additional thought on the conversation that you had with a person. The second thing recommended that you do is send any additional information that the person has requested from you. So if they asked for a writing sample, if they asked for your resume, make sure you send them that information within a timely manner. If you're taking upwards of two weeks to send this information, the person may begin to feel that you're not as interested as you may have indicated. So a really good rule of thumb is 24 to 48 hours for sending your thank you and sending them any additional information that they have requested. If by chance you need a week to maybe update your resume or update whatever documents they have requested from you, do let them know that. Say, hey, I'm planning on sending you my information. You'll have it in your inbox by next Friday. That way they know that you're not just lollygagging, but you have a plan for getting them the information that they have requested. The third thing that you want to do is ask them who else you should be talking to. Oftentimes, this is a really great question to ask towards the end of you all's conversation if it is that you're meeting in person. That way, what you're looking for as far as your plans, your goals is fresh on their mind and they may be able to organically think of others for you to talk to. The fourth thing is to stay connected and not in a surface manner, but in a genuine manner. If you have connected with this person and you all had a really good conversation, then that means bits and pieces of your conversation are going to stick with you. I suggest connecting to the person on LinkedIn if they have a LinkedIn account as a first thing to do. Secondly, every couple of months, send them an email and just check in with them. See how they're doing. If you possibly talked about a project that they were working on or a transition they were going through at work, bring that up. As long as you have genuine interest about it, then that conversation can very easily continue to flow. We've now covered all three approaches to job search strategies. That first one, again, being responding to postings. This is going to be looking at those general job boards or nursing job boards more specifically, finding positions of interest, and then applying to them electronically. That second approach, targeting organizations, this one's a little more narrow. 
Remember, we're looking at organizations that we're specifically interested in working for, possibly going to their website and then applying for positions directly through their website. That third approach, networking. Last but not least, networking can be utilized in combination with other job search approaches, but it is definitely important to utilize. Again, you have your warm contacts who should know your plans and your goals. And then by taking initiative, reaching out to some of those folks via LinkedIn or maybe at networking events who are working in occupations that you are interested in. That way you can begin to ask them questions. How did you get to where you are? What is a typical day like? What advice would you have for a student interested in following your path? Let your network work for you. Don't be shy and make good quality connections. We've come to the conclusion of our presentation. Thank you for tuning in. If it is that you do have any additional questions, we will be having a live Q&A session Wednesday, November 20th, beginning at 11 a.m. The access code is there. The live Q&A can be accessed via desktop, laptop, or mobile phone. So any questions that you have, large or small, do join me during that time and I'd be happy to chat with you. If you are interested in coming in for an appointment with our office, that can be set up via Handshake or you can stop by in person. You can always call our office as well. Phone number is 414-288-7423 and set up an appointment that way. For folks who are not close to campus, we do phone appointments and Zoom, which is video appointments as well. So again, really looking to just kind of meet you wherever you are on your career journey and be of assistance to you. Thank you again for tuning in. Hope to see some of you during the Q&A session.